or something like that. Back in the 20s, steel guitar was real popular. Uh, but the challenge was, back in the 20s, they didn't know anything about amplification. They were just getting into this thing called radio. They had some microphones. Uh, and a poor guitar player was trying to keep up with a 30-piece orchestra. And this one guy who played violin and steel, steel guitar, a guy named George, we're not sure of pronunciation, Beecham? Beecham? I don't know. Uh, you, that's a left for the English and uh, French speaking people listening. Uh, went to a guy named John Dopera, who was an inventor and a violin maker, and said, I need to make my guitar louder. What if we put a big horn on it, like the phonographs of the day? You know, they had a little needle and this big horn, and that's how they worked. And it, that was a, an unmitigated disaster. But while they were knocking around with that, John had this idea of taking an acoustic guitar, regular acoustic guitar, and putting these aluminum cones to resonate. You see where this is going. Yes, he put three cones in the body, and that worked pretty well. So well that he and his brother started a company called the National uh, Stringed Instrument Company, I think is what they called it. Yes, that's right. George and John inspired John to start the National Company. Well, National had some problems. Um, when you get six brothers of Mediterranean descent in a room, it's always going to be chaos ensuing on discussions. They're having some problems. John decided he would go on his own, and he went and started the Dobro Corporation. That's right, the world's most famous resonator guitar. This was kind of indirectly inspired by this guy named George, who was still working with John. But he had a thought that he really wanted to take advantage of these new electronic technologies, these amplifiers. He thought he could come up with something. He went to school, did some electrical engineering, and developed a pickup. Like developed with this pickup. Now, part of the history of the Dopera brothers with National and Dobro is there was this guy named Adolf who had immigrated from Switzerland that was a manufacturer and he was building the steel bodies for National. Uh, and we'll get back to him in a minute. He still had this relationship with John and with uh, George. And when George came up with the pickup, they went to Adolf, Adolf Rickenbacker, to build the bodies out of aluminum. And thus, the frying pan was born. Pretty cool, huh? This is like uh, 1931, 32, somewhere in that general vicinity. Is, and it is argued by some to be the first successful electric instrument. Uh, steel string guitar. They did do a solid body electric guitar later on in the 30s. It evidently didn't go very far because uh, everybody thinks of the, the Broadcaster is the first electric guitar. And as many of Leo's inventions, they weren't really the first, but Leo was the first one to actually make them work. So you got to give you know credit where credit is due. So we'll let Leo claim the first successful solid body electric guitar, Les Ball being one of the more popular ones. Everybody gets to have a little bit of glory. But back to Rickenbacker. So they did this one, and it's pretty cool sound. Uh, it would be better if I could play actual steel guitar instead of blues guitar. They did discover a problem with it. Uh, aluminum is a fairly susceptible to heat transference. And in those days they had a lot of heat on the stages. And it would go out of tune really fast. So, there was this new material called Bakelite. Which I thought this was one when I grabbed it out of the shelf, but it's not. This is just a colored aluminum. This is another one. They added a tone control to this. Um, but there's a new product they made, Bakelite, which uh, most of you are probably more familiar with as what they make bowling balls out of. Very dense plastic. And it works really well. Oh, this is an 8-string. See, I should prep better. Anyway, so Rickenbacker gave us the frying pans. Uh, and then they went on to do other things. Uh, they did acoustic guitars. And, and way down the road, they did this thing, uh, which was the uh, most popular electric 12 string ever. And we'll have a whole... Have we done that yet? Yeah, we did do the 12 string. So we're not going to do that again. But anyway... Uh, oh, this is almost tuned. Let's try this. 
So this is an eight string variant. For the guitar players at home, what's this tune to? I don't know. Ah, but I have here in my handy smartphone a tuner. So well, let's just see what it thinks it's tuned to. So the first note is a B. Two Bs, or not two Bs. D sharp, F sharp, G. So that's all, that's a half step. Excuse me, whole stop. F sharp, G sharp, B. So, this is down a half step. It really would be up to C, which would be a C6 tuning, which is the, the definitive steel guitar tuning.